This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. To be like the coal man. From the pop culture bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. We continue our Masters of Schlock series with the life of Roger Corman, B-movie impresario and godfather to young directors. He originally planned to be an engineer, but realized that life wasn't for him while earning the degree. He split his college career with a stint in the Navy in World War II. He got an engineering job, worked for four days, and then told his boss, I've made a terrible mistake. Roger's brother Gene was a showbiz agent at the time, so he decided to try filmmaking instead, starting in the mailroom at 20th Century Fox, and moved his way up to being a story editor. He picked out The Gunfighter as a good script, provided ideas to the eventual Gregory Peck film, and got no credit for it. He figured he should make movies himself. After a stint in Europe, he got odd jobs while writing his first script, selling it to Allied Pictures for $2,000. He also acted as associate producer for the film Highway Dragnet for free, just to get the experience. Corman scraped together $12,000 for his first feature as a producer, The Monster from the Ocean Floor. It was a success and led to The Fast and the Furious with John Ireland and Dorothy Malone. This was released through American Releasing Company, which would eventually become American International Pictures, despite offers from larger studios, because ARC offered him an advance for two more films. Fifty years later, Universal would license the name The Fast and the Furious for the current action blockbuster franchise. Corman's first directing duties came on Five Guns West, followed by... The Beast with a Million Eyes! Apache Woman! And The Day the World Ended! The Woolner Brothers financed Swamp Women with Beverly Garland and Mike Touch Connors. Misty's know it as Swamp Diamonds. Back to ARC for... Gunslinger, a misty film. The Oklahoma Woman. And The Girl from Beneath the Sea. By this point, ARC had become AIP and Corman was their lead filmmaker. It conquered the world with Peter Graves and Lee Van Cleef. He learned almost too late that man is a feeling creature. Naked Paradise. The Saga of the Viking Women and Their Voyage to the Waters of the Great Sea Serpent. Machine Gun Kelly, which was Charles Bronson's first leading role. Teenage Caveman with Robert Vaughn. Knight of the Blood Beast. A Bucket of Blood. All these. And at the same time, he was cranking out works for allied artists. Like The Undead. Not of This Earth. Attack of the Crab Monsters. Cry Baby Killer, Jack Nicholson's first starring role. Speaking of Nicholson, he also made an appearance in Corman's The Little Shop of Horrors, made in two days at a cost of $28,000 using existing sets from Bucket of Blood. The cult film would lead to the Broadway musical and film. Keep in mind, the last several films mentioned all came out in a five-year period from 1956 to 61. As if all that wasn't enough, Corman founded his own company, Film Group, in order to crank out more films for the double-feature drive-in market. High School Big Shot. Attack of the Giant Leeches. The Wasp Woman. Ski Troop Attack. Two films made in Puerto Rico, Battle of Blood Island, and Last Woman on Earth wrapped so quickly that Corman cranked out a third with the remaining budget, Creature from the Haunted Sea. You may be wondering how Corman could be so prolific. Well, if you've seen his early films, you know why. He was obsessed with getting a single take to save time and money, which would result in flubbed lines or incorrect actions included in the final product. He knew that most of his work was being seen by teenagers necking in the theater or their cars. He moved into color films with House of Usher, adapted by Richard Matheson's, from Poe's work and starring Vincent Price, which was a big hit, and followed a set of films based on Poe. The Pit and the Pendulum. The Premature Burial. Tales of Terror. The Raven. The Terror. The Mask of the Red Death. And The Tomb of Lygia. There's a ton of other Corman movies during this period. The Intruder slash The Stranger with a young William Shatner. The Young Racers with second unit director Francis Ford Coppola. Corman was impressed with him and financed his first film, Dementia 13, using the same sets, of course. X, the man with the x-ray eyes with Ray Milland. 
Corman, always looking for a way to make a cheap film, started buying rights to Eastern European and Soviet films, adding some wraparound U.S. footage, producing... Battle Beyond the Sun, with Coppola shooting the additional content. Queen of Blood. Blood Bath. And Voyage to the Prehistoric Planet, with footage shot by Peter Bogdanovich. By 1965, Corman decided he wanted to work in the big leagues and signed a contract with Columbia, but every project he proposed was considered too strange, too weird. Every idea they had seemed too ordinary to me. Ordinary pictures don't make money. So it was back to AIP for Wild Angels with Peter Fonda and Nancy Sinatra, a film that would begin the biker movie fan. Corman would direct the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1967 for 20th Century Fox, but spent $400,000 under the $2.5 million budget. His final directing work included... 1970's Bloody Mama with Shelley Winters and a young Robert De Niro. Gas. And Von Richthofen and Brown, a film he attempted to make based on the Red Baron for over a decade. The dogfights caused several real crashes and a death. In 1970, Corman founded New World Pictures, dedicated mostly to exploitation films such as... Angels Die Hard. The Student Nurses. The Big Dollhouse, which made Pam Greer a star. Angels Hard As They Come, produced by Jonathan Demme. And a series of nurse films. Big Bad Mama, starring Angie Dickinson. And during all this... New World balanced their reputation by distributing foreign films in the U.S., including those from Igmar Bergman, Francois Truffaut, Peter Weir. And during this period, New World won more foreign film Oscars than the other studios combined. Corman then made another run at major studio work at Fox, making films like Capone and Moving Violations from 1975 to 77. Back at New World, Death Race 2000 with David Carradine and a young Sylvester Stallone was a big hit and generated a series of car chase films. One of those, Eat My Dust, starred Ron Howard. Corman had co-financed a comedy written by Howard in order to get him to do that film, which led to Howard starring and directing in Grand Theft Auto, which of course began his whole directing career. In another example of Corman's influence on the industry, Universal would later buy the remake rights to Death Race and do a series of big-budget films with Jason Statham. One of Corman's editors, responsible for creating trailers, was Joe Dante. Again, Corman provided a chance to direct in the film Piranha. That movie's writer, John Sayles. The Star Wars juggernaut prompted Corman to produce Battle Beyond the Stars with a $2 million budget, his most expensive film to date. It's essentially the Magnificent Seven in space. In 1983, Corman sold off New World Pictures using the profits to bankroll millennial, Millennium Films. He wanted to make more substantial films, but ended up with Space Raiders, Screwballs, Suburbia, and Deathstalker. A series of lawsuits between the new owners of New World and Millennium, by then called New Horizons, tied up a number of projects in the mid-80s and resulted in yet another company, Concord Pictures. Their films included Barbarian Queen, Street Walkin', Cocaine Wars, Munchies, Strip to Kill, Blood Fist, Carnesaw, and Fire on the Amazon with a young Sandra Bullock. By the 90s, Corman was making TV films for Showtime called Roger Corman Presents. Now, this was a mix of new works and remakes of his earlier hits. He also produced a superhero movie franchise and eventual sci-fi TV series called Black Scorpion, which was rather racy. Sci-fi was a good home for Corman, where he produced a lot of mutant animal films with titles like Dino Croc, Super Gator, and Sharktopus. Now, we've been mentioning all along how Corman gave big names their first break. It's been referred to as the Corman Film School. He would bring promising talent under his wing, let them learn from him, and then give them a tiny budget to make their own works. Some other familiar names and their first Corman work. James Cameron, art direction and visual effects for Battle Beyond the Stars. James Horner, composer for The Lady in Red. Gail Ann Hurd, production assistant for Humanoids from the Deep. Robert Town, writer and cast for Last Woman on Earth. Bruce Dern, cast of The Wild Angels. Dennis Hopper, cast of The Trip. Talia Shire, cast of Wild Racers. Corman received an honorary Oscar in 2010 for his rich engendering of films and filmmakers, as well as a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Producers Guild in 2006, along with many others. Yes, Roger Corman was prolific, based on IMDb, producing 415 works so far and directing 56 of them. He also had cameo roles in a lot of films, mostly from all his protégés. Godfather Part II, 
Philadelphia, The Silence of the Lambs, Apollo 13, and Scream 3. And at age 93, he's still producing new work. Shout Factory completed a 13-part documentary series on his career called Corman's Hollywood. Not sure if I'm going to watch that. <laughs> I'm sure it's good. Yeah. If you don't want to watch that, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.